Hey friends, e familia, thanks for swinging by. You know, I was a little young at the time, but if you can imagine back in the 60s, hearing a song on the radio and digging it enough to go to the record shop, and then you see this. Are you gonna buy it? I can't get my wallet out fast enough. I know the sound is gonna be great, but I can't stop looking at those suits. Where the heck did they come from? Well, let's take a look-see. The Tailor to the Stars was Nuta Kotliarenko. Born in Kiev on December 15, 1902 to a Ukrainian Jewish family and to escape hostility of anti-Semitism at the time, his parents sent him at age 11 to America with his brother Julius. A misspelling by an immigration official forever branded him as Nudy Kohn. While living in a boarding house in Mankato, Minnesota, he met Helen Kruger and married her in 1934. In the midst of the Great Depression, the newlyweds moved to New York City and opened their first store, Nudies for the Ladies, specializing in custom undergarments for showgirls. Cohn and Kruger relocated to California in the early 1940s and began designing and manufacturing clothing in their garage. In 1947, Cohn persuaded a young country singer named Tex Williams to buy him a sewing machine from the proceeds of an auction horse. In exchange, Cohn made clothing for Tex. As their creations gained a following, the Cones opened Nudies of Hollywood on the corner of Victory and Vineland in North Hollywood dealing exclusively in Western wear. Cohn's designs brought Western style to a whole new level. One of his early designs in 1962 for Porter Wagner was a peach colored suit featuring a covered wagon on the back and wagon wheels down the legs and a ton of rhinestones. He offered the suit to Porter for free, confident that it would serve as a billboard for his clothing line. His confidence proved justified and the business exploded. In 1963, the Cones relocated the business to a larger facility on Lancashire Boulevard and renamed it Nudie's Rodeo Tailors. Many of Cone's designs became a signature look for his clientele. Among the most famous was Elvis' $10,000 gold lame suit on the cover of his 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong album. Cone created Hank Williams' white music suit and Graham Parsons' famous suit on the cover of the Flying Burrito Brothers 1969 album, The Gilded Palace of Sin. He designed the costume worn by Robert Redford in the 1979 film, The Electric Horseman. Many of the film costumes worn by Roy Rogers and Dale Evans were nudie designs. Billy Gibbons and Dusty Hill of ZZ Top sported nudie suits on the cover of their 1975 album, Fandango. And the list goes on and on. Well, I'm a honky-tonkin' daddy, baby, everyone can see. All them honky-tonkin' angels wanna honky-tonk with me, cause I'm a honky-tonkin' daddy. Yes, I'm a honky-tonkin' daddy. Yeah, I'm a honky-tonkin' daddy, baby. Come along and honky-tonk with me. In 2006, Porter Wagner claimed that he had acquired 52 nudie suits that costed between $11,000 and $18,000 a piece. That's about three quarters of a million dollars. Cone often paraded around town in his own outrageous suits, and his trademark was wearing mismatched boots to remind him of his humble beginnings in the 1930s when he couldn't afford a matching pair of shoes. He was equally famous for his far-out automobiles. Between 1950 and 1975, he customized 18 vehicles, mostly Pontiac Bonneville convertibles, with silver dollar studded dashboards, pistol grip handles, the most well-known belonging to Webb Pierce. Nudie died in 1984 at the age of 81, and his creations are still popular among the collectors and enthusiasts and will fetch a mighty high price when they come to market. In 2009, Nudie's stage shirt owned by Roy Rogers sold for $16,250 at a Christie's auction. 
a nudie shirt worn by Johnny Cash sold at auction for 25,000 bucks in 2010. Back in the 90s, some friends and I would hit the vintage resale shops in Houston. You could still find cool vintage stuff back then. The owner of one particular resale shop got to know us and pulled us aside one day and said, hey man, I've got something to show you. So he disappeared in a back room and came out wearing a jacket that was absolutely exploding with light. And he showed us the label and sure enough, it was a nudie. I thought it looked really familiar, so I went home and dug through my albums and yep, there it was, Wynn Stewart. While nudie suits are probably beyond the ordinary working man's grasp, there are some new tailors that are out there keeping the shine alive, so shine on, baby. All I gotta do is sell a few more CDs and I'll be putting in my order. So we'll be talking to you soon.